Well, hey, good good macho Monday morning. I hope you're doing well and uh, on this day. And this is actually Independence Week as a nation. As Americans this week, as citizens of the United States, we focus on our freedoms in Christ. We talked about that yesterday, our freedoms politically. And I know we, we live in a culture right now that's really struggling with what that looks like and how that plays itself out in many aspects. I'm still very thankful today, and I hope that you will allow that to impact your life in the week ahead. Well, we continue with Fruit of the Spirit. Last week, we set everything up and uh, understanding that it's the Holy Spirit who lives in us through our salvation that produces in us these fruits, these things that we're all as believers to have. And we we looked last week at love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We read through that. Those are the nine. And now what I want us to do is the next several weeks, we're just going to kind of break them down and and look at probably two a week until last week. We'll look at one and, and sum everything up. So let's begin. The fruit of the Spirit is love, okay? The fruit of the Spirit is love. Now, the word there for love is agape. And uh, it's the word that's the characteristic word of Christianity. People call it, it's a Christ-like love. See, there's, in the Greek language, there's a love for romantic love. There's a love for friendship, things like that. There's those love, you know, there's different meanings but the word that's used most often for followers of Christ and for Christ himself was this deep love, this deep affection, this completely giving over of myself on behalf of others. And that's what we see here. So it's it's making, you know, to define it, it's making sacrifices for the benefit of others. When I love you through the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to do what's best for you saw that yesterday again when we looked at freedom and, and how uh, freedom truly leads me to serve one another and to serve others. And so the, the love of Christ that we see here that, that the Holy Spirit produces is something that looks out for others. Greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friend. That's John 15, 13. But Romans 5, 8 is God demonstrates his love for us and that while Christ died for us, even though we're still sinners, Christ died for us. So we see that type of sacrifice. When you go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, Paul lays out love there. He talks about, you know, love is patient, love is kind, love is all these attributes. And so that's what love is. It's not a feeling. It's not an affinity or an affection. It's, It's driven by my desire, my willingness to speak into another life for their good, to speak into their life, to minister to them, to serve them, to care for them, to help them. Really to contrast it is for sure no sacrifice, but to take it to its base end, it would be hatred. Just don't care, you know, just no care, no no desire for them whatsoever. If the Holy Spirit's working in me, He's going to produce in me a love for others. I may struggle with that person. There might even be some disdain from issues in a relationship. But if I really bend into the Holy Spirit and let Him work in me, I'm going to love that person. And I'm going to sacrifice even if I have some issues because I know in Christ is what I should do. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Okay? But then He says the fruit of the Spirit is, is joy. Think about that joy can't help but smile when you say joy you know that genuineness that's within you I love here's a great definition definition uh, the joy is that emotion of great delight it's it's happiness and it's caused by knowing that God is with me and gives me gives me value no matter what worldly situations I encounter the joy of Christ is that emotion and that happiness that, that knows God's at work in me and I'm okay and I can know his presence even if the world is just going to pot, even if it's just falling apart, even if circumstances are coming up in my life that, that are circumstances of pain and, and hardship and heartache, but I can still, even though those emotions are real, I can know the joy of the Lord. I can know his presence. I can know what he's doing in me. 
In fact, James, in chapter 1 of, of his letter, his epistle, said, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you go through various trials. Think about that. You know, you're going through tough times. As a follower of Christ, consider it joy. Why? Because you're going to have an opportunity to grow. You're going to have an opportunity to move forward and see God at work. A contrast to joy would be misery. You know, it's very interesting that sometimes it seems like people that claim to know Christ are some of the most miserable acting people from the standpoint of joy than, than many others. Negative, critical, seeing all the bad stuff, that's not of Christ. Now, sometimes we have a personality disposition or maybe we have an environment in which we grew that kind of fed that. So maybe we have to work, hey, and some of us have to work against some of this stuff. But if the Holy Spirit's at work in me, no disposition of misery, but of genuine joy that God is at work and will take me through it. So this week, as we move through the rest of this week, I, I want you to consider love and joy. How, how is God producing them? And if you're like, Albert, I don't know that he is. I'm not seeing it. Talk to him about it. Say, hey, Holy Spirit, I don't, I, you know, help me to, to love people just naturally out of what you're doing in my life. Give me a joy that maybe I cannot explain so that I can glorify you and speak truth into others. So I'll encourage you with that. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Sacrifice on behalf of others. The fruit of the Spirit is joy, a delight that comes from knowing God in His presence. May we live those out and have those this week. Let me pray for you. Thank you, Father. And these traits, as all the traits we're going to be talking about, are tough. May we love people. Even if we have issues with them, don't like them, may we love people. And may we know your work because you produce that love in us. Father, give us joy. I don't know what's going on right now and in, in these men that are before me. But Lord, give them a joy that comes only for, from you. It may not come with solutions to problems. It may not come with any big epiphany of anything. But it can come because of your presence in their lives. Thank you. Now go and be with us in Christ's name. Amen. Have a great week. Thanks, guys.